Good morning. It's a joy to welcome all of you to our Lord's Day service, and we do hope that the service is a blessing to you. I want to welcome today my sister, Linda Gibson Taylor. She's going to be our lay reader. She is celebrating two milestones this year the big 6 0 for her birthday, and she is also celebrating 40 years as a nurse. And so we're so grateful that she's here, and uh, the fellowship. The fellowship hour will be in her honor today. So we hope that you'll join us for a time of fellowship and to get to know Linda. Uh, she will be quick to f point out that she is the younger sister. <laughs> for our other announcements. Jody has three empty spaces in her car for anyone who wants to go to the conference November 8th through 10th. So if you would like to go to that conference, we are paying for that. Please contact the church office and we will get you registered. We'd like at least two more people to go. So if you can uh, attend that conference, that would be a wonderful thing. for Dick Bierman, and we hope that you will attend that. Dick was a faithful member of this church. There are many wonderful evidences of Dick around the church. If you look behind me to this beautiful cross and the drapery behind it, Dick had that put up many, many years ago. Uh, before that, it was pretty drab, and he uh, did that for us. When we changed the carpet, he had done such a good job with the carpet that we made sure it was the exact same color <laughs> that Dick had had down here. Uh, you'll notice in our worship service that we say the Lord's Prayer every single service. That's because of Dick Bierman. Because when I first came, we were not used to doing that. And he came to me and said, why aren't we doing it? And I said, I don't know. And he said, well, then why don't we do it, Pastor? And I said, all right, Dick, we will do that. And people have told me what a comfort that is to hear the Lord's Prayer, which is echoed throughout uh, all the churches of Christendom are saying the Lord's Prayer on a Sunday morning, and we are joining in that. So we want to honor his life on Thursday at 11 o'clock. For our other announcements, we had a marvelous fundraiser for our Ugandan Moravian Christians, and we uh, are sending them money for their piggery project, and we were able to send them over $1,500. So we're so grateful to you who came out and all who have supported that. Are there any other announcements? Let us turn our hearts to worship the Lord.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our watchword for the week comes from the book of 2 Timothy 4.2. Proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. Please rise if you're able and join in singing our first hymn, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. standing as we join in the liturgy of discipleship found on page 37 in the front of your hymnal. What shall we render to the Lord for all his bounty to us? We will offer to the Lord the sacrifices of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Gracious God, 
for revealing yourself to us as one who created all things, who gave us dominion over all the earth, who called us into a covenant relationship with you, who has given us the privilege of being your ambassadors in our world, who loves us as your children through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We give you our heartfelt thanks. Jesus Christ, our Savior, because you were willing to come to earth in the likeness of humanity to take the form of a servant, because you became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, because God has highly exalted you and bestowed on you the name which is above every name, that at your name every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that you are the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. We humbly bow before you in the grace and Spirit, for dwelling within us and calling us to God by the gospel, for preserving us in the true faith, for leading the church on earth in its mission, for pointing the way of discipleship to each of us. We acknowledge your presence and power among us. said, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there shall my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. We hear your call to discipleship, Master. Master, keep the interest of the way we should go. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Jesus said, This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear much fruit and that your fruit should abide. Now, now the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain.
come to that time of worship where we bring our praise reports and our prayer concerns. We want to remember our sister Liz in our prayers who broke her foot the other day. We want to remember Charlie and Bill, Marge, Valerie, and Jay who are undergoing cancer treatments. We want to remember the Bierman family as they gather this week. Are there other prayer concerns or praise reports that you have? Yes, Linda. Please add the name of Angela to the cancer list, the friend of my daughter. Okay. Let's remember a friend of Marcia, Angela, who's also undergoing cancer treatments. Yes. I have a praise and a prayer concern. My praise is that my daughter has been home from Minnesota for a long weekend and it's great to have her. And my prayer concern is the one I asked for a few weeks ago, my friend Susie, Susie. my neighbor. She has not recovered yet from her stroke. Yes, we'll remember Susie in our prayers who's <coughs> recovering from a stroke. Any others? Yes, Claire. Yes, we'll remember Oscar in our prayers. Any others? Let us go to the, oh yes, Rock. Thank you, Roger, yes, to give thanks to the Lord when we especially feel his presence with us. Any others? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we are so grateful that we are here today, so grateful when family and friends can surround us and be a part of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for those who are here today, people we love, the people we are proud of. And we're so grateful when you intervene in our lives in such a way that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are with us. Thank you for that witness that Roger has borne today. We would remember our sister Liz. We ask that you would be with her, that you would grant to her your healing mercy. For all of those undergoing cancer treatments for Charlie, and Bill, Marge, Valerie, Jay, and Angela, that you would grant to them your peace, your strength, that each day they may know that you, underneath them are the everlasting arms. We pray for all of those who will gather on Thursday to bear witness to Dick's life, to mourn his loss, and to gather in hope of resurrection promise. We uphold Susie in our prayers as she recovers from her stroke. We ask that you would grant to her full strength and healing. And for our friend Oscar, that he might know your peace today, that he might know your healing mercy. For we ask all these things in the name of Jesus who loved us and gave himself for us. Amen.
ones of gratitude, and that these gifts would further your kingdom both here and throughout the world. For we ask it in Jesus' name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning is taken from the book of Psalms, 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Our New Testament reading is taken from Paul's second letter to Timothy, going from 314 to chapter 4, verse 5. But as for you... Continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The gospel reading is taken from the book of Luke. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Lord, I ask that all my words and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There is a malady among the human race that goes back thousands of years. It's an incurable illness, but there are some remedies. A vaccine has never been attempted because people like it too much. It's the malady of the ear itch. Now, I'm not talking about an itch that you want to scratch. I'm talking about an ear itch that when I hear somebody else's opinion and it's not like mine, I don't want to hear it, I shut them out. I, my ear itch is when I turn on the television or the computer and I want to hear the news, so I find a news reporting station that agrees with me. When I look on a Facebook feed and I see something I really don't like, I delete it. Don't confuse me with the facts. My mind is made up. An ear itch is when I only surround myself with people that agree with me. An ear itch is when I read the Bible and I love to hear Jesus loves me, this I know, but some of the other stuff I'm not too thrilled with, especially when it talks about my sin. If it talks about your sin, I don't mind. <laughs> but if it talks about mine, it bugs me. That's an ear itch when we only want to hear what we want to hear. An ear itch is when I'm facing something that I don't want to face so I wrap myself in denial. I remember when I was nine months pregnant and I was part of those classes, you know, that teach you how to breathe and do all that stuff, and uh, we were on a tour of the hospital and we saw the delivery room, and we saw videos, and I started to say, can I um, take it back? And then there was the NICU, the, the neonatal intensive care unit, where babies in trouble would go, and they had all these pregnant women around, and nobody wanted to look in, as if, if we don't look in and look at it, it won't happen to us. That's an ear itch. We want to cloak ourselves in denial. We want to be told everything's going to be okay, even if it isn't. Ear itches are really difficult things. So how do we remedy an ear itch? How do we open our minds to the heart of the gospel? How do we open our minds and hearts to other people? Well, Paul said to Timothy, what you need to do be doing when you know that people have itching ears 
is you have to be, he says sober. Sober doesn't mean not drunk. Sober means to be grounded. And what are we grounded in? Paul says that Timothy is to be grounded in his ancestry, in the people who gave him the gospel, in the people that gave him a wonderful example. So when life gets crazy and we're not sure how to respond, we need to be grounded in something. And one of the things I'm grounded in is when I think about the people who formed this church. They built the church on the shore and they ran out of money. And instead of saying, oh well, we're out of money, can't finish, got to go home, we'll figure something else out, they persevered. And it reminds me when I'm ready to give up that I need to be like those people on the shore that kept building and kept raising funds until the church was established. Some years later, they realized that building a church on the shore with the waves was not really a smart idea. Now, instead of recriminations, Instead of saying, you know, those people were really dumb to do that, and look what they've left us with, and now we're stuck with this building that's going to be destroyed, instead of doing that, they said, how are we going to remedy this? And they found logs and horses and rolled the building up the hill because the mission was too important, and they weren't going to give up because somebody else made a mistake in the generation before them. So we look to our ancestors, we look to our mentors. And he said, you also have to look at the word of God. Because when I'm angry and I start to boil, the word of God tells me that I can be angry. Jesus, after all, got angry. And the Bible says, be angry, but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath, which means you have about 15 minutes to boil and then you've got to figure it out. You cannot hold a grudge. When I think someone's done something to me that's unforgivable, my Bible tells me about a Jesus who died on the cross and while he was dying, he was forgiving his murderers. Can I do any less? When my ears start itching, and I want to do what feels good. The Bible tells me to do what is good. One of the people of God that helped me in my own ear itch, helped me to get rid of it for a season, I'm sure it'll come back at some point, was my friend Dick Bierman. Now when I met Dick, I realized this was going to be an interesting relationship. Because Dick and I were on opposite sides of the political spectrum. We were not in the same generation. He had very different views of life than I did. He had very different experiences. And there were times that we butted heads. And within the first few months of my relationship with Dick, he, he got so aggravated because I must have been poking him, which I love doing. I love to torture the man. And he, he started shuddering and he said to me, you're such a brat. <laughs> and I thanked him because I've been called worse. And then he would at times want to speak to me. Now I knew when he wanted to speak to me in private that it meant he was going to give me advice that I didn't ask for. And in one of those sessions when he was giving me advice that I was not asking for, he said, you know, you're a real control freak. And I thanked him again because it was true. <laughs> but as we got to know each other, our differences were still the same. But in the last six months of his life, I was no longer a brat. He was no longer a curmudgeon. But we were beloved brother and sister. And every time I left his side, he said the same thing to me. I love you. You see, if we keep our ears itching 
And we only want to be around the people who agree with us. And we only want to hear the truth that we agree with. We become so impoverished. My life was expanded because of somebody polar opposite to me. My life was enriched because of that man. It's so easy for us and it feels so good to surround ourselves with only those whose words agree with our words, whose philosophies agree with our philosophies. But we don't learn anything from that. And when we do that, we miss the variety that God has given to us. What a wonderful thing that because of Jesus, you and I are brother and sister. We might not agree on everything. We don't look the same. We don't have the same culture or share the same experiences. But we are brother and sister in Christ. You want to stay stable. You want to stay grounded. We get grounded in God's word. We get grounded by the people around us. And sometimes we'll still make mistakes. But I think if I make a mistake, I hope it's an error of love. How will you treat your itching ear this day? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the people that you put in our path that make us crazy. We thank you for the people you put in our path that challenge us. We thank you for the words of scripture that don't allow us to stay the same. And we thank you for the love poured out on Calvary that give us the courage to live in this life. We ask that you would be with us today and help us to be your people that you would help us to surround ourselves with all of those, whether they agree with us or not. We thank you, Lord, that everyone you put in our path is someone beloved by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me as we sing our closing hymn number 600, Jesus Calls Us.
Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.